good day and until next time thank you for joining Hello Kyle, greetings. How are you feeling today? Are things better? In your abdominal region? You're not dead. I mean, that is a pretty great achievement. <laughs> I think you're doing amazing in that case. Pretty sure the virus is gone now too. Nice, nice. Happy to hear that. Good, are you okay? Yes, alive is fine. <laughs> Alive is just good enough, you know? It is good enough. Listen, we are keeping standards low. Just... Just roll with it. Dan, hello, greetings, how are you? Sax, hello, I am doing great, thank you. Well, I am very glad that this place has somehow helped you. Thank you. Thank you for the for the message appreciated. A bit of calming energy. Woo, calm vibes. That was oh those were not calm vibes. Those were freaky vibes. Is a wet type of danger noodle in the painting or nail? It's a sea doggo. Is a pupper. Is <laughs> a is a is a dogger. <laughs> His name is Dingus. A 
A sea doggo, yes, Kay. Exactly that. I see you see everybody see doggo. Who are some of my favorite artists? Um, Andrew Tischler. A wet type of danger noodle. Mm, those are the best. Nice and moist. Our favorite artist. Me, myself, and I. Bye bye, Kay. Bye bye. Have a good one. Try not to die. Try staying alive. You know all the good stuff. Keep your keep your standards low. All right, see you in a bit. How do I use watercolor? With a brush and a bunch of water on a piece of paper. Well, I haven't worked with watercolors in a little while, so I can't really demonstrate you. But uh, it's sort of similar as I, as I would work with gouache. So, you know, whatever you see here could potentially be applied to watercolors. Oh, 
Well, I mean, what kind of answer can one really give to this question? Other than, you know, I take a, a paintbrush and I pick some colors and I paint the thing that I want to paint. There's not really much else to it. Are they just normal earrings or are my ears split? Well, they are not split, but they are stretched. So they, they are certainly not normal earrings. Barbara's got a better jawline than most guys, you know. Well, hence why, hence why Mar Barbara is not most guys, you know. Look at her. <laughs> Look at this beauty and grace. She is not your average dude. <laughs> your average valley dude. She is something else. Well, good night, Loki. Good night. Thanks for being here. gonna go and make myself a cup of tea so stay tuned we'll return in a moment
Okay, oh, I'm back with my cup of tea. Let's continue working on Barbara and her exquisite jawline. To be completely honest, I feel like her jawline needs to be lowered a tad bit. She's, you know, she has lifted it up a tad bit too much. Hello, Eric. She's colorful from the waist down. She is. I mean, she has a little bit of color in her hair, you know, a little bit of a purple shebang is right there. How are you, Eric? How are you feeling after your magnetic therapy? <laughs> A bit of sass in her hair. Right. At first, instead of sass, I thought it just said ass. <laughs> I was like, a bit of ass in her hair. Like, okay, sure, yeah, we can go with that. A bit of ass hair, you know. We're not judging. <laughs> Everything's fine. They're, you know. Today you had regular therapy too, as in some exercise. Okay, mixed feelings. Was it not good? Or is it more like you don't really feel anything? Uh, it felt okay to do doing the rehabilitation though, something else. What? <laughs> the physiotherapist was a bit too rough or what? <laughs> Not rough. What, uh, what then? <laughs> Don't know how to describe it. Every noun he used, he tried to make a cutesy for some reason. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> put your legsies like this, your handsies like this, your shoesies off to the side for now. Lie down on the bedsy. <laughs> Well, you are a grown-ass man, but then again, you have to put your shoesies to the side. You're fine. You're a grown-ass manzy. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Well, maybe some people are a little intimidated, perhaps, so he's just trying to make himself seem more approachable. And it doesn't quite work on everyone. You being a prime example. An ice... well, perhaps an icebreaker, yeah, sort of like that. No, oh, he's not this rough, intense medical professional that is now gonna break your achy breaky back he's gonna be gentle you're fine you're in great hands you're in great handsies <laughs> you're gonna be just a-okay
You drop the ballsy. You drop the ballsy? Where did you drop it? What did you say? What the heck did you do? Did you say, I'm a grown ass man? <laughs> oh, you were exercising with a ball mm, and you dropped it. <sighs> like a big ball? A small ball? One of them heavy balls? What kind of ball are we talking? Did it break the floor? Did it break the legsy of someone? About a zombie skull size. Mm. Alright, fair enough. Soft and squishy. Mm. Bruce, hello, greetings, and thank you, thank you. How are you doing? You were about to get it, but no, no, stay on the bed, see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, you know. He probably has reasons why he's using, you know, language like that. Finally got your coffee. Well, enjoy, enjoy. I'm having a great time, Bruce. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Having a delightful Thursday. Cannot complain one bit. Is this painting on my store site? It will be. It will be. I mean, depending... Well, to be fair, chances are I might even finish it today. And then it's gonna land in the store later this evening. Um, but it will be available. Hello, greetings. How are you? Uh, also, as you were leaving, you ran him in a corridor. And he's limping way worse than you are. Not sure how trustworthy that makes him. Wait. Oh, you ran into him. In okay. <laughs> At first, I thought you sort of just body slammed him on the corridor floor. And then he was limping away. Okay, so you met him in a in a corridor and he's limping. Well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm sure you can trust him. If your back is feeling like slightly better, then that's good. So you do um Yeah, it's it's fine, Eric. Now I understand. Does the does that mean you you will now have a meeting with him every day as well, or or is uh, sort of like the exercise thing a couple of times a week? Every other day, okay. I'm sure you will get used to the leg Z's and the bed Z's soon enough. <laughs> The nurses with the gadgets are daily. Okay, right. <laughs> nurses with the gadgets sounds like some sort of horror movie setup. <laughs> and then I had to go to the hospital to meet the nurses with the gadgets.
as long as I treat you like an equal. Do you feel like the therapy, like physiotherapist, is not treating you like an equal? Just because of his bed sees and leg sees. They don't have you sit down on a stool seat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe he primarily works with children. I feel like he considers you about three years old. I don't think that's the case. I think he's just trying to be approachable. Approachable and seem less intimidating, you know. Tut, don't touch that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't touch it. To be fair, now that I think about it, I <laughs> I actually am familiar with a couple of physiotherapists um, in my life, and now that I think about sort of their approach, I guess, <laughs> they also sort of use like a, like a similar language, to be completely honest. Maybe it's just part of the learning procedure, you know? You learn all the medical things, but you also learn to speak in a, you know, a sweet way. A very sweet way. <sighs> you don't know if you want him to be as approachable, though. No, it doesn't sound proper in English, because, I mean, in English you wouldn't say that, but, you know. I'm sure in Slovak it sounds fine, and in Latvian it also would sound absolutely fine. Breadcrumbs, hello, greetings, and oh, thank you, thank you very much, how are you doing? Doing great, thanks. Having a jolly time, excited for Halloween, excited for the C word. It's Christmas. I'm excited. <laughs> I am ready. My body is ready for some jingly bells and some spooky spooks. Oh my goodness, is it the freaking like, complete storm outside? The rain's going sideways. Great times.
I guess you're used to coaches and trainers more sort of along the lines of right, pull this shit hard until you feel it hurt like a like a bitch tit. <laughs> Right, I mean, you know, the physiotherapist is not there to coach you, per se. He's there to, you know, try to relieve your pain. <laughs> 64 days. Oh, it's getting close. It is getting close. It is getting close. I'm so ready. Well, thanks for the follow. And hello, the ghost. Greetings. You like that? Mm. I'm also quite fond of it. <laughs> also quite fond of the bitch tits. Uh, dra <laughs> dra Traveless. Oh my goodness, I'm butchering your name. Hello. Um, is this a commission or did I choose the subject myself? This is not a commission, no. I've been doing creepy, weird creatures um over the month of october so this just happens to be one of them <clears throat> and also the way i choose the subject matter it's more just whatever i feel like doing that particular day or you know time time of the week whatever and i and i knew i wanted to do some sort of on the water scene and i wanted to create a mermaid-like creature. So here we are. This is what happened. Well, thank you, system. This one uh, is the least spooky so far. That is true. That is true. Although we could be channeling the fears of those people that are afraid of deep underwater things because they are out there. I know. I know they are out there. They're like, ooh, I don't wanna. I don't wanna go into the ocean because I can't see the bottom of it. It's this is for those people. <laughs> Um, well, thank you, ghost. The first merm octopi you've ever seen. Right, it certainly is not an original subject matter. There have been plenty of mermaid octopus concoctions created in the past. I am British as fuck with a can of tea. <laughs> the bucket. It's a bucket of tea. Well, I'll take that, I'll take that. Although this is not, um, I guess, your typical sort of British tea. Certainly not an Earl Grey. Absolutely not. I am working on light paper, yes. Um, you may not be able to see uh, on, on the camera, it's not really doing justice to the background, but the background is not like one solid color it has many different variations of dark blues and dark purples and dark reds and sort of like a greenish blue so it basically is um sort of underwater but also sort of spacey underwater space wow that's quite something this stream is exuding very strong Morticia Adams vibes. I will take that any day of the week. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. Hello, Slas. Greetings, greetings. Thank you. How are you doing? Oh, you're not gonna mention it. I am glad. I am so glad you're not gonna mention it. Thank you, Slash. Appreciate it.
Yep, it's raining. It is raining hard. There is a poo ghost. <laughs> poo ghost, sperm, you know, whatever floats your boat. That guy. It's a ghost, okay? It's just a ghost living his best ghost life. More like afterlife. But some like to refer to it as a poo ghost. Lovely. Right? Just the wordage I would use. Lovely. Well, thank you, Ivory. You wonder who Bob and George are? Well, friends. <laughs> friends and acquaintances. Both are creatures of the forest, ultimately. You might get a mince pie lighter. Nice, nice. Thank you, Slas. <laughs> Thank you. The holiday pickle. I've actually never had a mince pie in my life. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I will embrace all kinds of other Christmas foods. But the sort of fruit filled things maybe are not my cup of tea. The tradition for me, well, <clears throat> clementines, gingerbread, braised sauerkraut, mm, just delicious, um, mashed potatoes, <laughs> mulled wine, and then, you know, what else do we throw in there? I mean, some sort of baked good. Something nice and sweet and delicious. Some cinnamon buns, perhaps. Oh, delicious. Yum, what? Yum and yum. What, what, what is the what referring to? <laughs> Well, as of right now, I only sell originals. Hello, Zolidaire. Hello.
Have I got a Patreon by any chance? Currently, no. There might be a paint paint Patreon, a Patreon account set up eventually, but currently I don't have it. A sauerkraut thing, but you haven't tried it, so you shouldn't judge. Well, in Latvia, you can't have Christmas without braised sauerkraut. It's just, you know, can't have it. Can't have it. <laughs> it's delicious. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It's one of my all-time favorite foods. It's divine. <laughs> just thinking about it makes my mouth get all watery. It's like, oh my goodness the best thing ever it's like sweet and sour and sticky and gooey and delicious and amazing and <sighs> all right bye bye slash bye bye thanks for popping in saying hello appreciate it a braised sauerkraut recipe you have some sauerkraut in the fridge but you never made it with it well I mean, if you eat meat, you can obviously add some meat to it. But generally speaking, what I do is pretty straightforward. You dump a fuck ton of sauerkraut, sour, sauerkraut, <laughs> sauerkraut in a large pot or a big pan, um, and you slowly, slowly braise it <laughs> on low heat. You can sprinkle some additional sugar on top of it to sort of help with the caramel caramelization process, you know. If it needs salt, hit it with some salt. Some wild people add carrots to the whole shebang. I hate it. So I just keep it as simple as it gets, but it, you know, it's just delicious. Hit it with some black pep. Nice. Stir it, braise it slowly. Get it nice and dark and brown and delicious. Well, slowly enough so the, the kraut doesn't burn. <laughs> but instead gets like mushy and gooey together. I mean, I don't, I don't follow an exact recipe, so I can't really tell you how slow is slow. I mean, you know, slow enough that it feels right. <laughs> that's how, that's how, um, I cook. <laughs> I, I don't have recipes. I just have, I know what the end result needs to be and I'm trying to get to that point. Well, pretty much, yes. Pretty much solid air. I mean, like for instance, in Latvia, I think a lot of the times together with the sauerkraut. So as I said, if you eat meat, you can sort of add some sort of like a pig, <laughs> some sort of pig part in there. <laughs> it has like a good amount of fat. So the fat also renders out and then becomes part of the sauerkraut and whatnot. Uh, but I sort of uh, skip that part. <laughs> Is there a Latvian name for the dish? Well, in Latvian, you would just call it uh, sautat kapost, which ultimately is just braised, um, braised cabbage. But you use um, sauerkraut for it. You can, I guess, use fresh cabbage as well. To be fair, I have done it once, and it worked fine, but it was sort of lacking the nice souriness. 
Well, thank you, Zoli, there. Thank you. Ooh. Model. Model time. Tut, I'm sorry, but what the heck, my dude? You're moving my mouse. That is not okay. You bet I also have excellent taste in music. Well, that is a, a bold assumption. <laughs> um, well, I guess one thing that I would recommend, which is, it's quite nice, uh, just background music. Pretty chill, though. Pretty chill and, like, ambient and sort of post-rock, I guess which is um, Hammock, that's the name of the artist. He has some pretty solid stuff. But you know, other than that, I, I, admit, I listen to all kinds of things. Kind of difficult to pick, <laughs> to pick something particular to suggest. I am not mocking myself, Solidaire. <laughs> I am not. I know what I look in the mirror. I know what I look like. I have eyes. <laughs> I have eyes. Toot, I'm sorry, but what the actual heck? He's constantly grabbing the... Who are you? The cable, the mouse cable, and just dragging it towards him. It's like, I have called the mouse. Ooh, this is my biggest catch. You just looked up braised sauerkraut. Right, well, in Latvia, you would then usually just have it with um, boiled potatoes and some sort of sauce. Um, and then, you know, there are sausages and whatnot involved in, in the whole shebang as well. But I like to have it with mash because I like mash. I love mash. Actually, I love mash. <laughs> I love mash and I love sauerkraut. <sighs> and it's the perfect food. <laughs> and then like a nice oniony, like caramelized onion sauce on top of the whole thing. And then it mixes together with the sauerkraut and the mash. And they all become one. And it's just heaven. Heaven in my mouth. Okay, that is what it is. And that is what I look forward to on Christmas. <laughs> that is what I want in my life and nothing else. Just some mash mixed together with sauerkraut and some caramelized onion sauce. It's just... is the best. Is the best. Is the best. Get some spare cables down there, reduce the chance of cat ruining the useful ones. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's gonna work, you know. Cats are pretty smart creatures. They will sniff out which are the ones that are useful. And they will ruin those. Winter food is the best. It's so hearty and so nice. Is this one of those foods you're not allowed to eat the rest of the year just special for Christmas? Well, to be fair, it sort of has become that kind of thing, yes. I mean, we will have, obviously, we will have mash and the, and the car caramelized onion sauce every once in a while throughout the rest of the year, but braised sauerkraut, sort of in combination with those other two things, that's only for Christmas. We will sometimes make uh, sauerkraut buns. So I will braise some sauerkraut and then put the braised sauerkraut in some just regular, regular yeast dough and then bake these little round buns. And they are delicious. But yeah, <laughs> Christmas special mashed potatoes, sauce, and braised kraut. 
It's just divine. Oh my goodness. I love it so much. So much. Ideally, I would also have some green peas added to all of that because I do love green peas. Arguably, I love green peas a little too much. No red peas, no. No red peas, only green peas. Is it rain sound? It is, yes. It is. You're googling these crab buns and coming up with nothing. Do they have a special name? They are not a traditional thing. <laughs> to be fair, I don't know if they are a thing, but I make them <laughs> because they taste real nice. In Latvia, I guess you would have um, just, a, just a sauerkraut without without being braised. I think some people bake buns like that. So, I don't know. I guess they would just be called sauerkraut buns. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I just call them, I just call them crowd buns. You know. They're the little crowd buns. They're delicious. Oh, another thing that um, is quite common around Christmas time, but then again, it's quite common around all kinds of celebrations in Latvia. It's um, also these little um, little dough, little dough blobs filled with chopped like speck and uh, onions and whatnot. So those are very popular. They look, look like little half moons. Little half moon speck buns. <laughs> Get it trademarked right. <laughs> oh boy. I'm not that, that dedicated. <laughs> But are you dreaming? Are you dreaming your biggest dream? Running away?
143, hello, hello, greetings. Yeah, we have introduced a lot of color here. Oh, very surprising. But how are you? Hope everything's all right. And Jono, hello, hello, greetings. Caramelized sugar potatoes. That is interesting. I have not heard of that. Sugar potatoes. Huh. You will be eating pizza in a few minutes. Nice. What kind of pizza? And sleepy. Hello, greetings. Uh, just like boiled potatoes fried in caramel. That is very interesting. But I'm sure it tastes great. veggie pizza of course because who needs meat really it's a bloodbath i mean that is great that is great enjoy you're okay my lovely neighbor <laughs> which one the one that drills 24 7 the one that drills of course right <laughs> mm. That's true, you can hold like so many drills. <laughs> All of the drills. Oh, also what I wanted to say. We will have another Advent tea calendar situation this year because 
Thanks to my beloved mother, I know, she is just a true blessing. <laughs> she sent me a tea advent calendar. A different one from the last time. We'll see how this is gonna go down. We'll see how many lemon flavored teas are gonna be in this one, but I'm already excited. I mean, we still have like a month and a half. Well, a little less than that. But uh, yeah, thanks to my mother, we will have a tea advent calendar. It's a jolly time. Funny thing with octopus, what is it? So like, where all the tentacles come together, an octopus has like a beak to break open clams and crabs and its mouth basically. Not sure how it pans out with this creature. Well, funny that you ask, because we already had this conversation yesterday about the beak situation. Um, and I proclaim that this lady, in fact, has no beak <laughs> anywhere. She is beakless. No, no, Juno, the, this thing is also going to be painted. I just want to finish the lady off first and then we'll, we're going to move on to Dingus. Right, Eric, yes. I am also glad we already had this jolly conversation about her potential in-between leg beak. I don't know.
Yes, Tut. Hello, good morning, rise and shine. <clears throat> Right, well, you know, I guess with some creatures we have created some background information. With this one, there is not much. <laughs> there is not much. We did say, I guess, this is Barb from Stranger Things. After she died in the pool. We can, we can go with that. We are taking another short little break. Stay tuned, we'll return in a moment.
Yeah, chat's empty enough so you can make all the arrangements. All the skeleton arrangements. And I replaced Bobic for just nonsense. That is exactly what I did. Exactly. You know. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with my decision. <laughs> well then, get some more coffee. That's a bit too many arms, but you know, I'll take it. Let me quickly... Just had to look up some octopus tentacles, you know. I don't draw them nearly enough. All right, Lynn, that's absolutely fine by me. You you do your BR being. Welcome back, you 43. What I'm going to do is the ordered art supplies are arriving today. Nice, 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 nice. 
Happy day! I'm gonna introduce a little bit of orange here and there in the hair and whatnot. Oh my goodness, are you okay, my boy? Just shaking his head vigorously. <clears throat> it's almost like the stream can't go by without someone mentioning the pickle or someone asking about your username u43 <laughs> it's like hmm that is a peculiar combination of letters and numbers <laughs> what is that You remember when you were the pickle pointer, you thought you were so clever, right? Well, <sighs> things have changed. <laughs>
it's sort of a mixture of things, but um, overall I prefer the Windsor and Newton ones. But I have a fair few from Schmincke, and then some Royal Talons, Wash, which also is really nice. I managed to find a Halloween themed RGB profile for your keyboard and now you have an evil bat in RGB. <clears throat> an evil bat. Well, that's pretty cool. Spooky. Hello, Bun. Hello. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I am doing great. Cannot complain one bit. <laughs> Look at that chunk. He also can't complain one bit. You can't complain. You're like, I don't even, I don't care that I'm being screeched crotched right now. I'm so asleep. So tired. Very tired. Great squishiness though. Great squish. 10 out of 10. I will leave the tentacly bits like this for now and we will start touching we will start touching the dingus, okay? It's time for some dingus touching. 
uh, Lochi, hello, greetings, greetings, how are you? So originally I was thinking, <clears throat> originally I was thinking of um, keeping, what am I drinking? Just some tea. Keeping it similar in color scheme to like this, but now the tentacles, they got very funky and very colorful. Like the colors are sort of in a similar group, they go together, but it is very very color filled so i'm not sure if i'm quite ready to color dingus in the same way if anything maybe i could do like a little so i have planned to do like a little fin on top of dingus <laughs> on top of dingus's back but then maybe the rest of his body i could just keep very tame and muted perhaps i don't know Maybe he could be like a, a bluish, light, light bluish, da ba dee da ba die type of guy with a colorful fin. Maybe that would be okay. Let's do that. Let's see how that works out. And if it looks like trash, well, then it looks like trash, you know? It's gonna be fine. We'll, we're, we'll be ready to deal with the consequences. I just go full a full 65 I'm not quite sure what that means so I can't tell you whether or not I went full a full 65 mind explaining what that is is that the name of the band the one that sings I'm blue da ba dee da ba die? Is that the one? Oh my goodness, Tut, are you okay? <laughs> well, in that case, Osipidal, yes. I go Hateful 65 quite quite often here on the Chanel. We we do all the blue da, da ba dee da ba dies here. Yes, Matt, what is it? He's dreaming. He's dreaming a little dream. Tails wagging, whiskers are scrunched up. Uh, <clears throat> what is the deal with the one strand of hair doing its thing? You like it? Are you referring to my hair? Are you referring to these bits? What are they doing? Just, you know, having fun, <laughs> enjoying their lives. <laughs> I quite like having tiny little wisps of hair coming from the sides. The thing is, generally speaking, I would prefer them to be a little shorter. But because I haven't cu cut my hair in a hot second, all of my hair is sort of the same length. So these bits sort of just, they are. But I quite like them. They are reminiscent of um, some weird bug, you know, with long ass legs just sitting there. I like it. Boop. A fan of the wispy bits. It sort of makes, I feel like it makes any hairstyle look a little less um what would be the word stiff i will use the word stiff um 
sometimes you know you you make your hair in some sort of fancy way but then it just looks a little too perfect <laughs> you know it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it's appropriate for like a day-to-day -day life it feels like it's appropriate for like a ballroom or for your fucking wedding you know but then you pull bits like this out and all of a sudden from a perfect hairstyle it goes into like oh this is cash this is nice this is ooh, and that's the that's the look i'm going for cash <laughs> cash things with bits <laughs> what is it what is it I don't know what I need to guess, so I can't really guess anything. Hello, Bunker. Greetings. How are you? Hope you're doing all right. You might have found the one. The one? What are we referring to? I mean, are we talking like things or are we talking people or are we talking cars or are we talking... Why are we talking? We're talking people, I would assume. I mean, it also could be something else, but if we're talking people, then heck yeah, congratulations. Emily is a fine name, I have to say. Hello, mother. Hello. On a mini holiday, sun is shining outside and the trees are colorful. Heck yeah. Jolly time indeed. Well, I'm doing great. It's pouring down like crazy outside. Everything's gray and gloomy, but I'm having a blast. I am having a blast. Uh, we're talking soulmates. Nice, nice. Well, as I said, congratulations. It is very exciting indeed. Where did you find Emily? <laughs> How did you stumble upon a, 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 a Emily? Or is it a secret? It's okay if it's a secret. Well, we're curious, Beans. I just want to say... Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for shiny, shiny, pretty things. Have some blood baths, and some Chloe hearts, and some kitty cats. Thanks. It's a long story, but you can tell. You can tell. We have time. Let me check my wristwatch. It looks like we have time.
You may or may not have joined a more politically inclined chat on Instagram. You have been a part of this group for a year. Okay, about three months ago, this radiant individual joined. Oh, my guess is that this radiant individual may have been Emily. Are we correct in this assumption? Mm -hmm. All right, Eric. Well, best of luck with both of those things. See you before Christmas, indeed. Farewell. Farewell. Basically, Matt, it's a lucky coincidence that you met Emily. may or may not be in love well that's a great escalation of the whole thing congratulations kids kids these days eh falling in love on the interwebs when i was young
what you're saying is you didn't write letters on a piece of parchment and send pigeons to deliver it. Red dog, hello, greetings. Well, you know, the, the distance is certainly not ideal. But you know, then again, if the feelings are strong, one day it's gonna be fine. And you can meet in person. Milash, hello, greetings, greetings, how are you? And I'm doing great, thank you. They're scared of pigeons, as you should be. Pigeons are the devil. It is what it is. <laughs> Thank you, Milosh. Thank you very much. Also, what is going on with comments? What do you mean? What comments and where? Some dude asking for OnlyFans. Oh, I haven't noticed that yet, but you know. There is no OnlyFans. No OnlyFans, no double fans. You have a pigeon story. I, well, spit it out. <laughs> if we're at it, then might as well share it. Only ceiling fans, and we don't even have those. Uh, when do I think will this painting go online? Oh no, when do I think this painting will go online? But to be fair, I think it's going to be done this stream, so I might post it. To be fair, I might post it later today. Take a pic. Paint the nipples on. I mean, that is the most important part of this entire thing. It needs some nipples. <laughs> and we can't do that on stream, so. Cutting stream, painting nips. Taking pick, posting. That's the. That's the. Uh, the steps. <laughs> the steps. Well, nipples sadly have to happen off stream. Yes. It would be great if I could just paint them on and then they would be there and everything would be fine and dandy, you know? But no, we can't have that. Because reasons. Very important reasons. But you know, it's fine. Well, it is art, yeah. I can see, you know, they don't want this to become a porn sort of drawing site. Fair enough. And if they would allow nipples, then things might get out of hand perhaps too much. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. Anyhow. 
One day you were coming home from work and you were super bright out. No, it was super bright out. Uh, you live on the third floor and you access your apartment via an outside staircase. So you reach the third floor and the access to the hallway is open oddly enough. As you slowly enter the darkened hallway from the bright outside, you hear a flapping, an aggressive flapping. <laughs> dun dun dun! You instantly react into fight or flight mode. <laughs> immediately pulls out a sword. Where are you, Pigeon? Where are you?